Did you ever get stuck somewhere, especially in a dream, where you don't know how you got there and you don't know how it's gonna end? Did you ever go through mental issues where you had trouble remembering things about your past and what's going on in your background and in the environment? Do you recognize anything around you or are you totally in a new strange place that you don't recognize? Well, one day, you might find yourself in the borderland, a place where you are limited in a specific zone until you unlock all of the levels in a way to get to the next environments and the next levels in a way. Welcome into this crazy, unrealistic story. The story of Alice in Borderland. <laughs> そんな and Borderland is situated in a state between life and death. It follows a very specific set of rules which are not clearly explained. And in that place, many individuals are regrouped in a specific place with an unspecific target that needs to be achieved. The story of Alice in Borderland is rich with mystery, suspense, fantasy and action and fully packed with amazing games that makes the audience think about the story basing on the clues left by the characters and the environments. And from this point on, I need to let you know, I will be hugely spoiling the show Alice in Borderland from Netflix. So if you don't want to get spoiled, I would suggest you stop the video right now. So if you don't mind getting spoiled or if you already watched the show, just keep on watching. But if you never watched the show and you don't want to get spoiled, it's on you. So I'll suggest you stop the video right now. Following the show, we can see that the borderland is not an easy place to access. It is a place situated in between life and death, kind of like the limbo in other cultures, which represents a tunnel or a pathway in between life and death, where people either die and go to the other world or they go back to life. And to get in the borderland specifically, the person has to be on the brink of death, on the last edge before truly passing away. And the other is that the person has to be unsatisfied with their life, maybe even in the slightest way. And, and the slicest little remorse and following the show on Netflix which I totally advise you to go watch yourself as well it was amazing to watch that story in a show nothing but respect for that show so following the show it starts a meteor strikes the place where the main actors are and that's how they got into the borderland in the matter of a few seconds so literally they got transport of course other people were in the borderland already but we'll be talking about that later in the video and with that in mind welcome to the borderland borderland works in mysterious ways some people experience a near-death experience to, due to a meteor strike and others had near-death experiences such as a traffic accident a shooting and due to the amount of people in the same area experiencing that near-death experience their consciousness got teleported into the borderland you have to understand that the show is based upon a specific principle which is that the body and the soul are two separate things and following the show you can pretty much see that the body stays in the real world and the soul is the one who goes to the borderland in a way and in there time goes differently just like the room of time in dragon ball hope you got the reference hope you got it <laughs> oh i just found a place where we can do a whole year's worth of training in a day i'm listening it's up on kami's lookout although now i guess it's just the lookout either way they call it the... Hyperbolic Time Chamber. What the f*** is that?! I thought it was called the Room of Spirit and Time. I said that because you kept mispronouncing it. Oh, I can do it. 
In the show, we can see that all of the amount of time that was spent in the borderline, which was around 2 weeks, is equivalent to around 30 seconds in real life. So for the entire 2 weeks in borderline, they actually just passed out for 30 seconds in the real life. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, boy. So basically to get there, you need a whole bunch of people in a specific area and they all need to go through a near, uh, near death experience at the same time. Pretty basic. After getting in the borderland, you discover that not everybody makes it at the same time and not everybody is in the same building for example. People will literally get transported into this other world in exactly the same environment where they were and with exactly the same people that were around them at the time that they had the same experience. So following the main story, we can see that some people were already in the borderland before the story of the main character starts. And that's because in real life they had their near death experience a couple seconds before the others. So if you die right now versus in 10 seconds or 20 seconds, that matters in the borderland. Depending on the number of days you'll be staying until the end of it. Some people get assigned a face card upon arrival while all the other players with the main characters got assigned player cards to play the game. And then a game is installed between the players to figure out the purpose of this whole game. And while playing the first game, everybody starts to understand that the more you play and the more cards you get, the more chances you might have to actually get back to the real world. So by actually collecting all of the deck, all of the set of 40 cards, you might have a chance. And throughout the games in the story, the main character starts to understand that the main goal of, of the game being childish games, but played with real people and real consequences, which is death. Hey, just wanted to let you know, welcome into the Guccino's Bazaar. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you like it, subscribe and comment down below. I want your greatest comment down below and hopefully you go watch all of my other videos that will distract you for a bit. And after a few games, the main character Arisu loses all of his best friends that he actually came with to the borderland. Always laughing like idiots. Drinking the night away. When I'm with you guys, I forget about all my problems. Hey, do you guys remember that freaking hot day when we made noodles with shaved ice? Caribbean, where are ya? Caribbean! And he still has to deal with everything going on while finding out the true purpose of the game which is to find a way out into their universe and to do that he allies himself to other players to actually have a chance to fight back One particular element you have to remember is the Joker. He determines which version of the borderline will be played by the group of people. And upon arrival, they get assigned a role, either a player or a dealer. And both parties are allowed to stay in the borderline until their visas run out. That's something they have on their arm. So if you overextend your stay in the borderline and you overstay your visa, you die immediately in the borderline and in real life as well. But if you want to extend your visa, you will have to start playing one of the death games and win hopefully and that's how you get like three more days the games are played in stages the first stage is about competing against the dealers and winning some cards to have all of the deck and the players believe that by having all 40 they can actually go back to their real world and if the players clear all of the games the dealers will die immediately and in reverse if the dealers win all of the players will die and the dealers will go back to life kind of controversial either way after that first stage completely horrifying the second stage where the dealers and the players confront the citizens in a series of serious games the citizens are not just watching from the shadows they are participating in the games they created so that they can win and stay in the borderland forever the people entering the borderland enter with items with them and those items are actually super familiar to them and that actually helps the story to make them 
merge more into that world and make them believe that they're actually in the real world while they are in the borderland actually. So the more immersed they are, the better it is for the story actually. So the more they associate those familiar items that they have with that world, the more they will associate that world to actually the real world. But the main character Arisu from the first shots already starts to remember things from the past and have flashbacks after he got into the borderland because he got an amazing ability to actually remember things from the past. So due to specific shocks and pointers, players can start to actually remember things from their past in their memories and they can start to make one on one so that they can figure out where the hell they are. <laughs> ビーチのリーダー帽子屋。彼は効果たる。a little FYI, from the beginning there was also a little rumor going on around the dealers saying that if they can kill around a hundred players, they will be able to go back to the real world themselves too. Which is practically similar to the rumor that the players are among them have. And Mimosa, you can see her right here, decided to volunteer to die in a game to let a chance to either the players to make it out with a new victory and not kill each other. Or either the dealers will have more than a hundred deaths so that they can go back into their real world. So in total, the first stage regrouped many games that killed many players. So many, just like in the Squid Game. ダイヤです。ダイヤです。ダイヤ。お願いします。あなたのマークはスペードよ。うん。スペード。スペードです。スペードです。スペードです。ありがとうございます。あなたのマークはクラブよ。then in the second stage of the borderland trials call name right the second stage is a face-off between the players and the citizens of Borderland and those citizens are previous winners of the games that decided to stay forever in the Borderland or until they are defeated because their role is to hold as much games the Joker sends them until they lose and if the players defeat all of the citizens at that point they are given the choice to become either a citizen of the Borderland as well or leave. If the players that win decides to stay they will become the next citizen and they will hold the next games in the next borderland versions. In the other case, if they decide to leave and go back to the real world, their memories get wiped and no one remembers the borderland after they left. But sometimes through some indicators and specific details, they can have certain flashbacks in their mind of a picture, a scene, a word, and in specific, the borderland. <laughs> アバターや仮想現実が仕事や娯楽などの生活を占めるようになった。50年後、癌や認知症、あらゆる万病の治療も遺伝子工学によって可能になった。その先の 500年間、脳の快楽物質を摂取さえしていれば生きていける。これが1000年後の未来の世界。so after going back to the real world at the end, we get some nice shots with Arisu and his friends after they survived the meteor strike and the borderland. But no one remembers clearly what happened, but maybe throughout time they will get their memories back slowly but surely throughout many pointers and shocks. And right here we also get a shot of the Joker at the very end. Lately I've been scrolling through Facebook and I found out a new season of the show is coming out on Netflix with Alice in Borderland season 3 and hopefully it would be good. A new game with new challenges, more characters, the mystery is on point and the suspense is real.
You want that. You want us to fall into despair. You want us to lose all hope. Hopefully you liked this video. And if you want to watch more, go watch the real show Alice in Borderland on Netflix. It is truly amazing to watch and actually quick to watch as well. And if you watch the Squid Game already, you will absolutely love Alice in Borderland because I literally discovered Alice in Borderland from watching the Squid Game. Don't forget, like, subscribe, comment the word Alice down below and go watch all of my previous stories and put a like on them. Peace.